Welcome back chemists. In this video we are going to focus on something called calorimetry and how we can use calorimetry to predict the heat content in different substances. After today you should be able to describe what a calorimeter is and its function, explain what temperature change is dependent on, and explain what specific heat is and use the specific heat equation. Calorimetry is the accurate and precise measurement of heat changes for chemical and physical processes. A calorimeter is a device used to measure the amount of heat absorbed or released during these processes. You could have a really simple calorimeter, anything that's insulated that keeps heat from being exchanged with the environment, so a styrofoam cup is a great example. A very simple calorimeter, as I mentioned, is a styrofoam cup. So they often call this a coffee cup calorimeter or a constant pressure calorimeter because it's open to the environment. It looks something like this. The thermometer will record the temperature change as the chemicals will react in the water. And the temperature change is then converted into units of energy. A fancier calorimeter is called a bomb calorimeter or a constant volume calorimeter. It looks something like that. This is what is used in order to burn food samples to analyze the energy content in food. So a food sample would be lit on fire inside that sample cup. It burns until it is completely gone. Heat from the sample is released and heats the surrounding water. The temperature change is then converted into units of energy. Temperature change is dependent on the amount of heat added, the mass of the substances, and the composition or the specific heat of the substance. For example, boiling water. You know that the metal pot will get much warmer a lot faster than the water inside the pot. Specific heat has the symbol C. This is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Its units are cows per gram degree Celsius or joules per gram degree Celsius. The specific heat of water looks probably pretty familiar to you. It is 4.18 joules per gram degree C or one cow per gram degree C. This is the formula that you will use in order to analyze heat changes. Q stands for heat. The units are joules or calories. M is mass in grams. C is the specific heat, which you saw on the last slide. These are the units. And then finally, delta T is the change in temperature. That little triangle means change. And to do change, you have to do subtraction. It's always T final minus T initial. Here's an example question that you would be asked. So it says, how many calories of heat are required to raise the temperature of 525 grams of aluminum from 13 degrees Celsius to 47.8 degrees Celsius? Notice I give you the specific heat. A really helpful strategy is listing out all the variables that you are looking for. So we have Q, M, C, and Delta T. The question is asking how many calories of heat, so that's what we're looking for. The mass of aluminum is 525 grams. The specific heat is given in parentheses, and then the delta T, again, is T final minus T initial. You want to make sure that all your units are appropriate. So for example, if your specific heat is in cows per gram degree Celsius, you want to make sure that your Q is going to be in calories and your M is definitely in grams, and your delta T is definitely in degrees Celsius. The units must match. Then the rest is plugging and chugging. Do your multiplication, and then you can see that your units cancel out appropriately. So your unit should be in calories. Here's another example. 
what mass of water would have its temperature raised from 22.5 degrees Celsius to 94.1 degrees Celsius with the addition of 5.1 kilocalories of heat? Again, Q, M, C, delta T. Q is 5.1 K calories. But if you notice, that unit is not appropriate. We need to convert that into calories. Next step is mass. I'm looking for that because it does say what mass of water. C, we want to use the specific heat of water. So remember I gave you two values. You could use 4.18 joules per gram degree C or you could use one cal per gram degree C. Since our Q is in calories, I would re recommend the one cal per gram degree C. And then delta T is 94.1 minus the 22.5 given the problem. Then the rest, again, is just plugging and chugging. You have to do a little bit of algebra. To solve for M, you're going to have to divide both sides by the one calorie and the 71.6 degrees Celsius. And then when you do that, your units will cancel out appropriately so that you get a mass of 71 grams. Hopefully this video helped you to understand how you're going to be using Q equals MC delta T to perform different calculations. Thank you so much for watching.